everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am continuing on with my rose boarding suit project and hopefully we are going to get a whole lot of this project done this week because we're running out of time before costume college. There are two weeks left and I'm scared. <laughs> So we have a lot, a lot of work to do. If you have not already seen the first video on this project, I will link that down below in the description so that you can go check that out. But basically last week I did three mock-ups to get to where I had a perfect fitting bodice. So let's hope that those mock-ups will actually translate into the stripey fabric because I am now cutting all of the stripey fabric pieces. And that actually also includes facing. So that's what I'm kind of working on figuring out right now, because if we look at this picture right here, you can see that when the collar turns back, we actually do see the little stripes right up at the top of the stripey fabric. Unfortunately, that means that I have to cut the entire facing part out of the stripey fabric and what that causes, what issue that leads to is the fact that this is a really quite a bold stripe. And so even when I have the flat lining in, which this whole thing is being flat lined with cotton sateen, even with the flat lining in, you can just kind of see that stripe through. So when we're talking about having like our front piece and then having the back piece also have stripes on it. And honestly, this also is the case for like where the jacket is over the skirt. It's kind of the same issue there, but we have to worry about, okay, can we see these stripes through this side right here? And I also have to figure out like how an interfacing works in there because we do obviously need the stiffness in the collar. We need some sort of stiffness or structure underneath the double breasted button area. So that's what I've been working at right here. So I have already cut out now all of like the standard bodice pieces and I'm flatlining those with the serger to the cotton sateen. But as far as the facing goes, I actually cut out the front pieces again, but this time we're kind of flipping it on its side because the stripes on the front piece they run horizontally but the stripes on the facing have to run vertically so that we get those little stripes on the collar up here so hopefully we're not going to have an effect where we get stripes on stripes coming through the fabric but there's going to be two layers of cotton sateen plus one layer of sew and interfacing in between all of this hopefully that will be enough to block those stripes if anything it's probably going to be more of an issue in the like sides and back where we don't have that and we're seeing the skirt through because in those areas I have it planned at least to just be the exterior stripey fabric and then the cotton sateen and then under that would be the skirt. So we're going to cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, again, I'm cutting out a whole bunch of these front pieces because here is the front facing and then I still need to cut out the cotton sateen and the interfacing. And then I will probably serge those three layers together here. And then once I can assemble the rest of the actual like outer bodice pieces, then I can also sew this on right sides together and turn that. Now all of the velvet pieces where you see that like on the collar or on the waist, those are all going to be applied on top, almost like an applique okay, but like hand stitch in place. Because when we look at this picture right here, which someone was able to take when it went to a museum, I don't know who I found this picture in the Titanic Costumes Facebook group, which I will link down below. But this picture, we can see the little whip stitches around the corner of the belt piece. And I say belt in quotation marks. It's really, it's again, just applied velvet onto the bodice. So I'm going to do that with the collar pieces as well, or at least these like front turned out lapel collar pieces. The back collar is going to be entirely cut out of the velvet, but we still have a little bit of tweaking that we need to do with that piece because my mock-up I think was just not quite quite right. So we will get to that also within the course of this video. And also we'll be doing sleeves and also we will be moving on to the skirt hopefully. So we have a lot a lot to do. I'm going to go ahead and get right back into cutting out the rest of my facing pieces here and sewing everything all together. I have a stripey suit bodice jacket thing. 
The lapels are looking absolutely immense right now, and I'm not really sure why that is when they seemed fine on the mock-up. So that is one thing I'm going to have to look at because I, although I don't have the seam allowances or anything folded in right now, that's only going to take off like that half inch all the way around and they are still way too big even after that's removed. So I don't know what's going on there, but better too big than too small because I can always cut them down. And I did not do another mock-up of the upper collar yet. So I do have to figure that out. I think before I can put the facings on because I'm fairly certain that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front facing pieces which are like the full piece each of them which I feel like is totally overkill but we're going to see how that goes and I'm going to take the front facing pieces and then in the back I'm going to have just a little like curve of facing but the collar needs to get put on before that can get put on so that the fold of the collar can go into that facing so there's going to be a little bit of trial and error and delay there while I do have some more collar mock-ups. And then it is also time to do a sleeve mock-up. It's a two-piece sleeve because we do see a seam in the inner arm as well as in the outer arm. And they kind of, they don't so much create chevrons. Like the upper part of the arm is still very straight, but just the nature of a two-piece sleeve, there is a little bit of curve to the lower part of the arm. And so because of that, you do get a little bit of the chevron going on in the inner arm, even though there isn't in the upper arm. So I have to mock that up and kind of draw out my stripes so that they can hopefully be in the right place when I go to put them for the final, but at least this part is now together. So as I was trying to fold up the collar to figure out like where it should actually go, which I think is here, I was noticing this gap that was happening right here. And I feel like it's because this section is actually too long by a little bit in the shoulders. Like I need to take out a bit here at the neckline, maybe even up to an inch to be honest. And then when I was looking at that, it was making me look at the back more closely. And it just feels like the back is actually too wide. So I don't know where these issues are coming from because I feel like they did not exist on the mock-up but yeah I think that I need to shorten the shoulders by a little bit here just to make it a little shorter honestly the arms eye part is fine it's just at the neckline where it's a little off and then also from kind of under the shoulder blade here up to nearly the shoulder I need to take in I think just the back panel about a half inch and that way it will also probably look a little straighter because right now the back panel is actually pretty narrow at the waist and then pretty wide in the back but I have a narrow back and so that doesn't make sense anyway why that would happen so I need to take some of that out of there but yeah I think that this shape right here so really we're gonna wind up losing probably three quarters of an inch it was just somehow too big I don't know where these like too big issues came from but yeah, there's some stuff that needs to be tweaked here. I feel like this seems a lot better in the back. I really just took out about a half inch on each side of the center back piece, but that does seem to be fitting a lot better. Likewise with the shoulder tapering that into the neck, and then I also cut away the back of the neck, the center back, so it will sit a little bit better. To be honest, it maybe could even be cut away a little bit more, but it feels so, so much better now, and I think it looks a lot better. I'm not getting that really big gap right here, so so I think that all of those fit problems are now worked out and I'm going to kind of transfer how much of this needs to be cut off to the facing pieces because those obviously also will need to be shortened but I think that this is the correct folding for like how much excess was on these pieces so yeah I think that that is good uh, I do obviously need to kind of redraft the collar now from the last mock-up that I had because the neckline overall is shorter around uh, because I took that out of the shoulder so that will probably change at least a little bit although I did cut it down in the back I don't think that that's enough to balance it but we're gonna have to test out mock-ups and see so I I'm going to go ahead and cut out a mock-up of the upper collar portion 
question. I'm again, I'm not going to cut these off for a while, not until we're ready to go with the facing. They're pinned in place right now. They're also pressed on where that new edge should be. So I feel pretty confident about just leaving these for the moment. And I'm also going to cut out some mock-ups for the sleeves. So I spent some time online last night trying to work out some of the additional accessories that I'm going to be needing for this costume that, you know, I hadn't really thought about. Things like the tie, the tie pin on the tie, potentially the earrings, though in my opinion I think that's a lot less important because they're, you know, fairly hidden under the giant hat. But speaking of which, the color of the hat, which because my hat is the wrong color, it's, you know, very blue. The bow that goes on the hat, the big piece of, you know, ribbon, for lack of a better word, which it's like somewhere between six to eight inches wide, so it is definitely not ribbon that you can purchase. And also like the trim of the dickie, basically just a whole lot of stuff that I hadn't really thought about initially. And so I have an order coming from Amazon, I think tomorrow, or I've got a few over the course of this coming week. Like I purchased three tie options because I just don't think I want to waste my time on attempting to make a tie when I could just buy one for like $6. So I have three different ties that are coming in different widths and different shades of purple. So we'll see how those go and what might match. And I also picked up from Joann's today, I picked up some fabric spray paint in purple that I'm hoping <laughs> will potentially work for the hat to just kind of like spray it lightly. And yes, I could ruin everything by spraying this because I obviously don't have anything I can test it on because my hat doesn't have like test you know I mean I suppose I could test it on like the inside of the crown <laughs> that's probably the only place that I could really test it where it just won't show at all or to be honest the ribbon is so high so tall I could probably test it on the outside of the crown as well but speaking of the ribbon I don't have time to like order spoon flower fabric especially considering I don't know if it's any good so I don't want to kind of like go that route when I would need to try and do swatches and everything so I have two potential ways that I want to do the ribbon. One is that I did actually buy this stripey fabric. It's like a really lightweight cotton, but I bought this from Joann's today and I feel like in a pinch it will do, you know, for now. It's not going to be exactly the same and I'm going to need to interface this because it is very lightweight, but I do feel like it kind of gives that same read. And the other option, or I suppose there's two, is that I could either use the suit fabric as kind of a base where there are already structure stripes, or I could take some like white silk. I've got, it's not a taffeta and it's not quite a satin, but it's, uh, I think it's like a silk file satin. I could take that and literally draw on the stripes. So I also have some fabric pens. I bought the black ones today at Joann's and then I've got a pack of like a rainbow pack that has two different shades of purple in it. That is coming. So I could try that of like drawing that out. Obviously that takes a lot longer than just like taking existing fabric, but this really is a blue, not a purple. And I know this whole outfit is like towing that line between blue and purple but it probably should be purple based. So yeah, oh, and I also bought this little ball trim that I think might work along the cuff and collar. I'm planning to do a dicky collar, not a real shirt. So, and I'm planning to sew the little fake cuffs into my coat sleeves. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go mock those up. Well, I sewed together the side seams of my sleeve mock-up and like just tried it on my arm and it was looking pretty good. So I decided to set it into my sleeve. Um, this is meant to be a fitted sleeve so that's obviously not going to work it is way too big around in the arm size so I'm gonna have to unpin this and figure out how much I need to take out of this also if you haven't already figured it out from my makeup it's the 4th of July so that's why there's all those booms in the background but a good way to like fit your sleeve to figure out how much you can take out also like if it's too tall of a head is to put on your garment whether you have your corset on or not it doesn't make that much of a difference but put on your garment so that you can fully put your arm into where it goes in the arm's eye and then pin this in place this is especially helpful with a fitted sleeve because I know where my elbow should be it should be right here in this 
seam. And so because I know where that should be, I can then pull this up and pin this into place, marking my side seam or my shoulder seam, for example, right here. And then I can see, wow, there's a lot of excess over here. So this is the area that I'm going to be concentrating on, cutting this down and getting rid of this excess. Once you've marked where the edge of your shoulder comes to down here, you can then measure up one inch from there, mark that, and that will be your cut line. And then again, like all of this is really going to be removed. I have reset the sleeve. I do think it might be a little bit large through the arm of the sleeve, but I always have a habit of making them too small, so too large is better. I could always take it in just a little bit. I have also drawn on stripes. By the way, I didn't cut off the excess up here, so that's why it looks bulky, but I think we're definitely really close. I might just take it in a little bit through kind of the elbow area and then figure out exactly where my stripes need to go. I've taken in little bits of the sleeve kind of all over to be honest and most importantly I've taken this area up pretty significantly like getting over an inch out of it and that made all of those wrinkles go away so I think we've got a good fit. Now I have to figure out where the stripes go and then I can cut out the stripey fabric. I've made a little test chevron and tried to extend one of these up, which it's hard to do to make sure that you're doing it straight when the sleeve is actually still set. I was aiming to ideally get one line to actually hit where the like shoulder seam is, even though I can't see in any pictures if that is actually where one lines up to or not. But they're one inch wide stripes and this chevron right here, I was trying to get to like this sort of chevron look on the lower outer elbow and that's where I've drawn this in so I think that this is awfully close you can see like one inch from there is really really close to that mark so I think that's close enough for me and even just with these kind of like two little test stripes I should be able to get the green correct so I'm going to go ahead and take this off cut out more of these and also trace this to a pattern just so I can have this fitted sleeve I probably have a fitted sleeve somewhere but I was being really particular about this one which is why I started from scratch I literally started from like this two-piece puffed sleeve that is way different so basically from scratch to get this sleeve here and yeah I'm going to go ahead and cut it out in the stripey fabric and flatline it to the sateen and then it can go ahead and get set in and I will have close to a finished sleeve. So ironically, when I undid this all, this stripe was very much not straight, but when I made it straight from where I had started down here, which was the important part, it wound up meeting up to the shoulder seam. So look at that. And I've gone ahead and given one parallel to that and then matched up my lines down here and given the parallel stripes up here as well. So now I can go ahead and cut these out. By the way, since I find this interesting, you might as well, but these are the sleeve shapes that I wound up with, the inner and then of course the outer. So they look like that. Well, part of it lined up, but I think just with the sheer nature of like the shapes of these patterns, it was not going to line up all the way. So you can see it's mismatched there. There's kind of oddities up here with the different shapes going on, which hers does have some weirdness as well. But so maybe it's just that little isolated area that really gets the chevrons. And then the inner arm, it really doesn't work at all. So, but again, hers also like you see on hers where it can go like this and you basically have a stripe that comes near to the edge and then away again and again I think that's just the shape of the sleeve and that's just kind of what happens so we'll be fine with it I think it'll be just fine and then we'll have the nice little chevron area on the back seam so I'm gonna go ahead and set these into the bodice now or the jacket now and then we can mock up the collar so sleeves are on, as you can see. I do need to bind the lower hem, but I wanted to make sure that the sleeves were fitting correctly before I actually did that, and everything's good, so I'm just gonna bind that with bias tape. Now, the collar, I actually took the exact same one that I had used as the mock-up. I think that was last video that I did that mock-up, and what I wound up doing, because I did take in the shoulder area, it was a, just a little bit shorter. So I did shorten the collar just by the time I got over here. I basically made it a little bit shorter. And uh, I think that that seems to have fit. However, it was still just like bunching up weirdly in the back. And so what I've done is I've kind of pinned in a little gusset of where that collar just needs to be spread a little bit farther like this so that it doesn't get all hung up and it'll lay nicely. Now, obviously this isn't laying really nicely because it is one layer of 
thin cotton, it's cotton sateen, and it's not like interfaced or has all the layers, etc. But I think the shape is right. Now I don't have my corset on right now, but even when I bring this over to be like double breasted, I feel like the shape is looking like the shape of her collar. So yeah, I think that that's gonna work. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off, keeping that little gusset pinned in place and then recut it. Probably just go ahead in the velvet because I do think I have plenty of the velvet to play with since there's really not much velvet that gets involved here. I'll double check first. But uh, yeah, I think I can just go ahead and do it in the velvet and then it's going to be interfaced and probably flatlined just to give it that like heft of a collar and then it can be attached in and then the facing can finally be placed in and all of that encased. So I know that this is still looking fairly blue of what you're seeing right now, but I promise you it is actually a fairly close color match to this purple. However, this bottle right here, not enough to do the entire hat. So this area doesn't have any paint at all, and really this area over here needs another coat. So that's annoying because these are like six bucks a piece and now I have to go buy another one of those. Grr. And I have to go to Joanne's that means. So yeah, annoying. The way that I decided to put the facing on here and not have to worry about transferring all of my lines for where I was going to remove that excess was actually just to draw a line on my fold line and then stitch on that fold line. And now I'm just gonna cut away the excess, leaving about a half inch seam allowance for most of this, except for of course, when we get up to the corner to clip it in nicely to the corner. And so both of my facings at this point are sewn on. I do still have to figure out the facing for the center back here. If I can, I'd love to just be able to use a strip of bias tape, but that might not be enough. I might have to do like an actual facing like you see in a jacket, so we'll see. So I don't have my corset on yet still, but look what I have. I have lapels and collar and everything. So I have not done the little like facing or binding in the center back of the collar. That is actually just kind of sewn slash pinned in place right now and I still have to do that. I also still have to do the binding on the wrists here and I think I mentioned it but I'm going to put faux cuffs of the sleeves within the wrists as well so I do have to figure out exactly how that's going to work but I think it's literally going to be like a horizontal white cotton band with the little ball trim at the end of it. I can't remember if I showed you the ball trim that I got at Joann's. It is not my preferred what I would want because this is really going to have to be hand and sewn in there's just like no sort of like area of seam allowance to put that in there I was hoping for something better but this was all they had of course so I think it will work and I also will wind up making a dickie that has the little collar with the ball trimmer on the collar so that is going to be like the last thing I do on this though because if all else fails I will actually wear like a button-up shirt or something like that underneath or I don't know. I mean, I do hope to actually have the dickie, but hey, I could probably hand sew that on the plane on the way down to Southern California and still be okay. So that's going to be like the last piece of this costume. But I also have other hand sewing that I need to do now that this is like pretty much ready. Actually, really everything that's left is almost entirely going to be hand sewing. So the buttons are going to be decorative. I am almost 100% certain that the buttons on this costume are decorative and not functional and that it closes instead with like hooks and eyes. It's possible that it could be a combination of buttons and hooks, but I don't know. The idea of doing like velvet covered buttons and then having functional buttonholes doesn't sound very pleasant. However, I'm pretty sure I remember and I'll put up an example right here, that uh, you can see the buttonholes underneath the buttons. So you, like, I'm still going to make the buttonholes on my machine. They're just not going to be, like, cut and functional, I think. We'll see. But 
the other things that I need to do once I do the binding is I'm going to have to cut out the velvet piece here and that's going to be hand stitched on and then with the corset on obviously I will have to mark where like all of the buttons and everything go and I will have to do the band at the waist so that is probably going to be a tomorrow thing because it's nearly midnight tonight and I'm going to do the wrists tonight and maybe figure out the lapels here. I'm also hoping still to get to a mock-up of the skirt this week but it's not looking that promising because I do have actually a baby shower to go to tomorrow so we'll see how much that I get done Saturday and Sunday but oh my god we're in mega crunch mode now guys. Also, something just dawned on me, which is a little bit unfortunate, but there's nothing that I can do about it now, which was that I was really paying attention to these being straight up here, but what I wasn't paying attention to, I mean, I, I looked at it up here, but then I wasn't paying attention to the fact that it's meant to be a straight strip with no stripes like intervening within the strip. It's meant to be just a straight piece of white that goes around or along this collar. And mine obviously isn't because my stripes are going off and intersecting at this angle. So I have this uninterrupted part right here, but unfortunately not all the way down. So that is going to be something that's going to look a little different. There's nothing that I can do about that now. But yeah, a little bit unfortunate. But these are going to be nice and straight, which was what I was aiming for. Okay, actually, let's talk more about the buttons because I have some other information. I totally forgot to take a closer look at the flat lay pictures that one of my Instagram followers, Ruthie Reichman, had sent me, which is this picture right here, where actually it shows that they are all functional buttonholes. So obviously, like the other ones that are the double-breasted part, those are fake buttons. Like, they are just buttons on there um, because that's kind of usually how double-breasted things work. But these other ones are all functional, including the one that's through the velvet I don't think I'm going to be able to do a functional buttonhole through the velvet that is just too many layers too many things that could go wrong while trying to do a machine buttonhole like I would have to do that by hand and I don't want to do that so I'm gonna make that one fake and that one closed by hooks and eyes the rest of them I think we're gonna go ahead and do actual buttonholes so now that I've been doing the painting on the hat, I just do feel like this is super, super blue and probably not really going to work unless I just completely run out of time. But my order of markers, fabric markers, also arrived. So I got two sets because I just wasn't sure about the colors and then I'll return whichever one doesn't work. So this is one of them and then this is the other one. Both of these are from Amazon. I did also get these from Joann's because I figure I'm probably going to need a lot of black and I didn't know if like the one black pen that comes in each of these sets would really work. So I did a little test over here just to see what the markers looked like. So first I tested this set because I do overall feel like this one looked like it had better colors and this bottom area really is the stuff from that set. So all of the black lines are the black pen from that set and then I also tested the gray, the light blue, the darker purple, and then the lighter purple. So you can see all of those pens right here and I just wasn't sure what colors I would need to get to like the stripes of the bow here especially because we do actually have a lot of gray silvery stripes and unfortunately I think this gray is really way too dark that's this one right here it just reads almost black I feel like the blue doesn't read silver either it reads very much blue the two purples are pretty nice I'm not sure honestly which one would be better for the purple stripes so I'll have to maybe decide on that. I did also test the two purple markers from this pack. I actually love the light purple. That's this one right here. I almost feel like it could read even as the gray, um, though it is obviously more purple than gray. The dark purple is just like really dark though. It's way darker than anything on the hat. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and return these. My one worry about something like this, or actually I guess I have two worries. One is if you look closer, you can definitely see the pen strokes. And I don't know if there's really any way to smooth that out without like fully darkening where that is. I do like that it's ink though, as opposed to fabric paint. I feel like fabric paint would look really stiff. I don't know. I have to run to Joann's today again anyways. So maybe I'll be tempted to pick up some fabric paint. I don't think I have any in purples, but I like how easy it is to use. You know, the black lines I can just draw along with a ruler, but I wonder how far they will actually go. 
because this is a big bow. I need a whole bunch of these stripes for a long like swath of fabric. This by the way is the fabric that I intend to use. This is leftover scrap silk from Elsa. So it is that silk file. It's a slightly off-white but I feel like her bow actually is slightly off-white. Like I know that this is just a picture on my phone but you can see it there that it is a little more off-white really than her coat. So yeah. Anyway, so that was my test out, and we'll see how things go as I run out of time for this project. It looks like a jacket! Look at that, I have sleeves and a collar and everything. So now I have to figure out where the sort of like velvet applique, for lack of a better term, goes on the collar here, which it should just keep a one inch distance from the edge, and I believe a one inch distance from up here. It's more the inner side that I have to figure out like how to mark that as to where it goes to, because it does need to roll around to the inside at least a little bit. And then right now I'm also trying to figure out the button slash waistband placement so basically looking at this and then like scaling it up if the stripes are one inch which is my stripes are one inch so hopefully her stripes are one inch and if not oh well mine are one inch so that's what we're going off of the buttons I calculated should be about seven eighths of an inch to one inch I got the seven eighth inch covered button kits which once you wrap them become kind of a little bit closer to one inch to be honest so I got those and I have to make the I think it's like 13 buttons or something like that that are needed for the total both the skirt and the jacket and then also it means that the waistband is just about two and a half inches wide so I kind of took just like a piece of ribbon this is not quite two and a half inches it's a little bit narrower than that but when we look at the scale of this we can see that there's about a three inch gap between each of the sets of buttons and that there is a two inch gap between the top buttons and the top of the ribbon and that gives us the ribbon placement. So I think what I'm going to do, marking this is going to be a real pain honestly, but I think what I'm going to do is grab a different piece of this ribbon that's a little bit longer because this is like exactly my waist measurement I think right here. Something that I can like tie around myself because obviously it's very easy to mark the horizontals like that's not a problem at all it's the vertical stripes where we have nothing to go off of so I have to figure out like where the top is there so that I can continue it around because that velvet is I don't know if I'm going to take it all the way to the edge over here. I feel like that's extra bulk that's not needed, but it's going to have to go past obviously where the closure is and then it goes all the way around otherwise. So yeah, and all of that velvet lapel and the waistband has to be like whip stitched on, which hopefully won't be too bad. I basically did almost all of the rest of the hand sewing, all the facings, the collar, the sleeve bindings, etc. I did all of that in like about an hour, I think. Um, I didn't quite do all, all of it because I still have a little bit of the hem back here that just needs to be stitched into place by hand. So yeah, I still have a lot more hand sewing to do. Gotta make those buttons. Gotta make the button holes for the buttons and then sewing on all of the velvet pieces. So I'm gonna figure out where this waistband goes and get to sewing. So I had grabbed this 19 teen skirt out that I made like 12 years ago thinking, okay, if this fits, this would be really good to just kind of use as my base pattern for her skirt. And then I looked further into her skirt and A, this has a center back seam, which hers does not. Hers has a back panel, just like the coat. And then B, I think that then her skirt is literally just two panels that have the vertical stripes, whereas the center back is the horizontal stripes, but the vertical stripes that wrap around. And if we look at this picture here, this is one of the ones that Ruthie sent me, then we can see that there are a series of darts around the top that are taking out the excess. So I think that these two side panels may actually be literally straight panels that then the excess is being removed just by those darts. I have a feeling there is shaping in these seams because at least for me if I didn't have shaping here on a skirt this high like darts are not gonna do everything there that would just wind up being kind of bulky and awkward and then the length of the skirt it is very narrow as it goes down. I know that you can't really see my legs here probably but basically there's enough for her to take a step about that because you do see her do that like as she's both 
boarding and also getting out of the carriage. But this skirt right here actually has way more than that, so we don't need that much body anyway. So I'm basically going to have to scrap this skirt. I mean, obviously this is an existing skirt, but scrap this skirt pattern and do this from scratch. So with a skirt that is this fitted, this is what I'm doing to figure out the patterning for this and like the sizes that I need. First off, I'm not going to bring it up this high because I'm not ever planning to wear this as a standalone skirt. And honestly, I went a little too high, especially in the back with this skirt, even though this was the same era. So I'm going to start it at the natural waist. So I measured my waist and then I clipped it with a quilting clip. And then I did the same for the high hip. So this is kind of where it really gets wide, but it's not the widest this point and I was trying to keep this even as in like parallel to the floor and I measured there and closed it with a clip and then measured the distance between and then I went and I measured the low hip this is the widest point and this one I did a little looser because if you pull this in tight that skirt is a not going to fit nicely and b not going to be comfortable and frankly I'll probably make it even a little looser than this because I just want some ease in that area you know you're going to be moving and everything like that but you want this measurement and then again the distance between there and that's going to help you pattern a really fitted skirt like this. So I was just looking at the 7 8 inch button kit that I got today at Joann's and I just feel like with the scale of the stripes it's looking too small. And I have these which are the flat backs that come with those same kits for the 1 and 1 8 inch and I feel like the scale of this is looking way more correct. Now granted the dome part of this is just slightly larger than this but I just think that scale looks so much better. So I went and I ordered a pack of 100 of the actual dome ones on Amazon they'll get here on Monday and we will do buttons then but that will be obviously in the next video. So the cool thing is that this velvet actually has a little stretch to it. I don't know if you can see that which is making it a lot easier to do this really really subtle curve here. Really I'm just able to kind of gently lay the velvet out with that slight curve and it's behaving and everything. So right now I'm just pinning along the edges basically isolating each section so that it can be totally flat and then pinning it in place and once it is all pinned in place I still have three sections to go but once it's all pinned in place I'm just going to do tiny little whip stitches right along the edge that will hopefully blend in decently with the velvet. So to figure out the shape for the velvet that goes on the lapel, I've taken the scrap of interfacing literally out of my trash can and I had marked while I was wearing it, these marks are just other random marks, but I had marked while I was wearing it this pink line that was the roll line for the collar. Now I want my purple velvet to go an inch past that so that it doesn't accidentally roll over and show extra, but I don't have enough in my scrap. So basically I'm going to make my little scrap here the pattern and then I'm going to add the additional plus the seam allowance so I'm gonna have basically like I don't know three eighths of an inch seam allowance so that I can just fold it over have a nice clean edge but we're going to start I decided actually seven eighths inch from here is gonna be the line down this way and then one inch from the top it just seemed like it was just shy of one stripe from the edge so that's why we're going with seven eighths but yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna draw that on and then I will place this on the velvet add seam allowance add the like extra for the rollover etc and I'll have my little pattern. This is what it looks like pinned in place which seems so funny because it is the inside of the jacket but then once everything's closed then it folds out to the outside which I can't do one-handed and so it becomes the outside. All of the velvet is now on and I think it looks so good. So basically this is where I have to leave the jacket until I get the buttons in from Amazon tomorrow so that I can cover the buttons and do the buttonholes. Because you can't really do buttonholes until you have the buttons because at least for like a machine buttonholer it needs to have the button set in there for the size. So that will come in the next video. But I do have something else to show you as well. So two of the ties that I ordered came in from Amazon. There is still one more that I'm waiting for and actually both of these are getting returned but let me just show you why. So first off I think you can see that this is just like a way too shiny and B it's a really way too blue. I don't think that it's even coming across quite as blue as it is in person but it's very very blue purple so that's just not gonna work. However I do really like the width. This one is a two inch tie and I think the, the width is pretty nice. 
On the other hand, this one came in. It's a much better color match. It is like a little bit brighter, but it's the same red toned purple. And again, I feel like my lighting is catching this as more blue than it is, but both of these are both very red toned. And I also like the fabric on this. This is like a much nicer, smoother, like a matte satin. However, it's just too narrow. I didn't realize that I had gotten this in one and three eighths inch width. It's way too narrow. And I'm Unfortunately, this company does not seem to have the same tie in a two inch width. So I've ordered one in a two and a half from them and we'll see how that looks. But I now have two other ties coming plus the original one I was still waiting for and we will see what those look like in next week's video. So let's move on to the skirt. This is the pattern that I've worked out. So it looks like when we look at like this picture right here that we do see that sort of tuck pleat in the lower portion of the back and it looks like it is made entirely out of the horizontal stripe. So that means although the back is the same width at the hip as the bottom of the jacket which is 11 and 1 8 inches it's a probably a little bit wider by the time it gets down to the bottom and also it has that tuck pleat in there from about the knee down which is a four inch wide pleat so I'm adding four inches there it's probably honestly going to come out in an angle like you see in like 18th century riding jackets and then this is going to be a straight panel or at least for now it's going to be a straight panel it might be shaped up at the waist on the sides but it will have darts to shape it and that's going to be 32 inches wide plus these are all plus balance and then this one it's 36 inches wide up at the top again shaped by darts straight line over on this side and then it gradually goes out a little bit down here at the bottom and then gradually curves up at the top to be that 36 inch wide so yeah that's how that works and then there's a little inset piece at the front of the head that I don't know exactly know how that's going to be like attached in but I think it's just going to be like a little piece and we're going to cut out a mock-up and see how this works. So I've got my skirt mock-up on here and I'm starting to go around and like pin little darts in. The only ones that I can tell where there are actually darts placed is that there are two darts, one of which is very close to the edge and then the other one seems to be like equal distance from the center on this front piece. The rest of the darts I kind of just have to make up on my own. And so I started pinning darts in over here. Like these two feel fairly okay, though this one, Definitely there's something weird going on and I don't know if it's just the angle or what but it's like very gappy then right here But I think what's also causing that is I'm realizing and I know I can't show you the full length here But I'm realizing that there is actually too much volume around the hem not by a lot I think I need to take out two inches on either side And so the way that I'm gonna do that is just undo the seams that are on the center back here or like the side back seams, the two seams that actually exist in this skirt. And I'm gonna take two inches out of each of these like front side panels and then put it back together. The back panel is actually narrower than I had wanted it because I forgot to put my seam allowance on this pattern piece. So this is narrower. I haven't been able to see like if it lines up with the coat, but it is meant to line up with the coat. And I think that it is too narrow right now. So I do have to figure that out. And I'm also still not positive if the curve that I made in these seams because these seams are curved from the hip to the waist I can't tell if I made that curve enough but obviously I have a huge chunk of extra right here which needs to get pinned out but part of this is the two inches that's gonna go away so I'm gonna have to figure that out but I also can't pin on that side of my body so it makes it a little bit difficult um, however I think we are on the right track at least ish so I'm still currently working away at doing those changes to the skirt mock-up. However, it is the end of this sewing week and so the rest of the mocking up and making of the skirt is going to happen in next week's video. And ideally I will be finishing the whole project next week because frankly by the end of next week there are only two days left after next week until I leave for costume college so we are really getting down to the wire here at this point I have nine days left to complete everything that I need to which also includes some stuff still on the court gown not to mention finishing off rows and you know getting packed and also working and doing a lot of other things within these nine days so I'm a little scared 
However, I am excited at what the jacket is looking like now. I wanted to show you how it looks with all of the velvet. I think it looks really, really great. So that makes me very happy and I can't wait to add the buttons and buttonholes next week as well. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional costuming and sewing content out on Saturdays but I post every day over on my Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions and if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel I do have linked my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons Jean, Dan, and Kim. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!